Hey guys, Chris here from Life Line EMS Training. Today I want to talk with you about suctioning. Let's clear the junk out of there. And to get away from this 10 seconds and pull back out and stop trash that has continued to pass its way along uh, in the profession. So we're going to go over suctioning. And the mission of suctioning is to get junk, food, the buffet, whatever the person ate prior is at, has vomited up out of their airway blood, you name it, right? Chunks of nastiness. Because if we don't, it's going to make its way down the airway. So go down the trachea and get lodged and prevent any airflow into the lungs. Get aspirated down into the alveoli or to the bronchioles and inhibit gas exchange and cause problems with our ventilatory process. And we need to get it out. So we need to suck it out, right? We're vacuuming it out. And that's essentially all we're doing is creating a negative pressure vacuum system and just sucking it out of there, just like you would the dust on the floor in your house. So where do we get the suctioning tools from in our business in the pre-hospital world? Well, the dentistry world. That's where we get it. Think about the last time you went to the dentist, they laid you back. They were going to do whatever, a deep cleaning procedure, put braces on. They took that nice suction that has the metal wire in it bent it, put it in the corner of your mouth, sucked a little bit of the saliva or the spit out, and then it hung it essentially on your lip right there, right? They don't need big orifices. They don't need a lot of suction. They're not pulling a lot of nastiness out. They're essentially getting the little bits of salivary response you have when your mouth stays open and foreign objects are in there with whether, you know, cleaning tools or chemical cements, adhesives, whatever. So we get our stuff from the dentist world. So the tools we use come from their world. And we have got to stop this no greater than 10 seconds, 10 seconds suctioning maximum. If you don't get the stuff out of the airway and you put the bag valve mask back on and push positive pressure volume in there, you're going to ram it down deeper. If you're going to suction to get stuff out of the airway to prevent aspiration, get it out of the airway. It's XABC. Stop exsanguination, airway, breathing, circulation. If they're not bleeding out and you're managing the airway and there's stuff jammed in there, get it out. There's no, if you go 11 seconds, the person's going to die an irreversible death. No. If you allow the chunky nastiness to go into the trachea and become lodged and not allow gas to go past, that they will do. You don't vacuum your house in 10 second intervals, right? We don't suction airway in 10 second intervals. So here's our suction canister. We got our lid. We've got our 90 degree angle down to our suction tubing to our Yankar suction. And the Yankar suction is the one that came from the oral surgery community. So a suction canister here. And let's look at what the top says. So if you actually read the top here, you know, it's uh, printed in the same color as the plastic it is. It's almost impossible to read, especially at two in the morning when your eyes are all fogged up and it's dark out. So if you take a magic marker here, and mark across the words, you can actually read. So vacuum. So the center port right here is what goes to the suction or the vacuum. This is how it makes that negative pressure. This is where the patient's tubing goes. This goes to the patient. And this little port over here is if you wanted to hook up another one in tandem. So you're gonna be sucking so much junk out, you wanted to have two canisters running in tandem. Then this big port right here, it's not labeled, but you'll see my fourth grade handwriting. I wrote dump on there. That's where if you have that train wreck that is just dumping tons of nastiness in their airway and you want to take this canister out, lift, pop this lid right here, this little port off, and then you can just dump the contents out and then plug that back up and get back to work. This is the tube from the vacuum. This is the tube to the patient. And then we have that tandem port blocked here. This will make or break people. I have seen more often than not People not pay attention to the suction canister lid labeling and have this to the patient, patient to the vacuum port and not able to get any suction. This will make or break you. I highly recommend taking a magic marker and just writing over where the actual labeling is so you can easily see it at two in the morning. Now, remember on our suction tips, there is a port. That port that sits right here that thumb port is a control port so that when you introduce whatever tip you use into the airway, you're not creating suction until you get it to the point to where you want. So you don't get it sucking on the side of the mouth or the tongue 
or um, the cheek. Once you put your finger over that port, you close that circuit, and now the tip becomes the point to which the vacuum tries to neutralize or the contents go up and in. So if your finger is not on, air comes in that port and goes out, the tip is not on suction. That little hole, you put your finger on there, now you create suction through there. And you'll see here, there's two different types. This is the Yankar with the smaller tip. It has a couple little small holes around here, has a small little orifice at the end. This is the Ducanto catheter, it has a nice large end on it. So you can get large, chunky nastiness up and out. Highly recommend this one. This one is a business suction. This is the one you need on the trauma patient, the person who's now starting to vomit up the number two supersize with fries they just ordered prior to coding. This is the one that gets a lot of stuff up and out. I can tell you personally, I have had to go after large pieces of food that were sitting proximal in the airway. I actually just took the whole catheter tip off and used the end of the suction tubing to go in and plunge. Now you don't have that hole there. So if you put this in and it catches the cheek, you're going to start sucking the cheek. What you can do to regulate when suction on and off is to turn on and turn off the suction as you go in. What I did was have the suction off, place this on the big piece of steak that was lodged in the patient's mouth, turned it on, it pulled the you know big T-bone out and I just walked the catheter back out. This has a large lumen end. You just lose that regulatory ability by not having that open port to prevent suction. This is an example of the generic Yankar on common 3 16 tubing, the Ducanto catheter with the normal 3 16 tubing, and the Ducanto catheter with the large board 9 30 seconds tubing. The difference it took to clear out the contents of this cup. So 1227, the Yankar was still pulling. 1209, the Ducanto with the regular tubing, the 3 16 had it all out. At 631, that's seconds, by the way, the Ducanto catheter with the large tubing had cleared the cup. So half the time of the Ducanto with the 3 16 And if you look at the generic Yankar with the common tubing, it's still pulling out. It's only probably got half of it. So very, very, very efficient when you're trying to get large volumes out. That trauma patient, you nick the artery in the airway and it is just copious amounts of old faithful bleeding. You want to be able to pull lots of stuff out. Here's a suction unit. A suction unit is nothing more than a vacuum. All it's doing is creating a negative pressure state in this canister, drawing the contents from the tube in, trying to create that neutralized container. This is the dial This in this example this would be the on button, this would be the battery level, and this is the dial to tell you how much negative pressure or how much pressure or vacuum you create. Some of them have little dials, you'll push the button in if you want less pressure, it's commonly referred to as um, adult mode, you pull it out, it creates less vacuum, and they said that that's the pediatric mode because it has less suction. Practice makes perfect with this stuff. Find the expired cans of soup, baby food, vegetables, especially in your station cabinets. You know, everybody has a C-shift. Find the one in the very back that expired, you know, back in NOM. Pop the lid and get your suction stuff out and practice. Look at what the different suction modes do. Look at what the different suction tips do. Practice it without the suction catheter and see how much actually you can pull out. Then just put the contents in the container back in the can, let somebody else practice. And then if you want to get good, put a Dixie cup in the mouth of a mannequin. And then you can pour the Dixie cup full and have them practice. So you can actually practice positioning. Ideally in the real world, you would want to suction with the head up a little bit so that the stomach contents stay down, right? That's the whole beauty of the 30 degree elevation during arrest, 30 degree elevation during transport, 30 degree elevation with the TBI or head bleed patient. All that stuff has to do with venous dumping. The one thing we forget to talk about when we have the head up 30 degrees is the stomach is below the mouth, which means it's less likely to easily, easily release the contents up and out. So practice makes perfect. We hope that helped. That's a review on suctioning. As always, if you have any questions, hit us up at info at lifelineemstraining.com, and we hope you have a great day.